Alright guys, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video, and this week I had plans for something a bit more ambitious than what we're doing here, which at, at surface value is yet another MUN mission, but I'm doing my own little twist on it because a lot of people are asking me how to get better at docking and how they suck at things like lunar orbit rendezvous, that sort of thing, so you know, I said, you know what, let's do like a little tutorial but slightly different to most tutorials. So just the beginning of this video, I'm just building the craft. You can download the craft in the video description. What I'm doing is essentially an Apollo style mission that you can play along to. So I've kind of made it a little bit more simple by having a single stage for the Mun lander. So not having a separate stage for the ascent and a different stage for the descent. It's all just one vessel that does the whole landing and the whole taking off just to simplify things. So it's not really a true Saturn V recreation, but I'm not really going for that. I just went for a Saturn V-esque looking rocket. Um, just because I guess it looks cooler. And that was it. <laughs> that pretty much goes for most of my ship designs, honestly. I compromise a lot for the sake of vanity. Is it vanity with ships? I don't know, whatever. Anyway, there's the payload pretty much all built. I have the launch escape tower. I did consider using a SpaceX style, and I guess Boeing's doing the same thing as well, uh, escape system where it's no longer a launch tower. It's just like, well, in KSP at least, it'd be a series of separatrons along the side of the capsule. I did do that. Um, I did try that, but I thought, you know, we may as well... Uh, somewhat be reminiscent to the Saturn V aesthetic and have the tower, but I'll, I think I'll try, probably try and phase out the tower for my crafts going forward now that most space programs are moving away from launch escape towers and instead, instead incorporate uh, some sort of separatron escape system built straight into the capsule. Anyway, here we are, taking off from the launch pad, and uh, there it is there. So the actual, what I meant by play along of this series, I did, I, I mentioned this and then didn't actually elaborate, so I admit it may be somewhat confusing <laughs> that I didn't explain it. Essentially what I'm doing is, Apollo star missions to me, when I was trying to learn how to do them, I really struggled with it when I was a wee lad learning how to play this game. What I would often do is look at, I think it was like some random Scott Manley video where he went to ELU for the first time after it was first added to the game. He did like an Apollo style rendezvous. And I would always just skip to the part where he went from the surface to the mothership again in orbit and just watched it and tried to figure out what he was doing. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to do that, but I'll also be providing a quick save, not only for when my ship is landed. You'll see me create the quick save, and then I'll just carry on doing the mission. So you can get your game open at the same time, and then you can watch what I do and then try and do it again on your screen, if that makes sense. And I, got, I made another save file as well. For another part of the mission. I can't remember what it was now. I'll probably go back and <laughs> hopefully maybe I'll remember and go back and change this bit of audio so that I, I um, clarify it a bit better, but I probably will uh, forget. Anyway, like I said, the hardest part of me for me for these Apollo missions was the actual docking. So I didn't talk too much about the actual ascent into LKO because I think if you're going to be planning on trying an Apollo style mission for yourself or any kind of mission that involves rendezvous, I would definitely recommend at least having a grasp of getting into LKO. And you know, you should have at least gone to the moon. You should have gone to the moon at least once uh, using a, a, a normal style mission, direct ascent profile. By that, there's no rendezvous, just the whole ship lands on the moon, the whole ship comes back, which in KSP actually makes a lot more sense than Apollo style, but it's got a lot lesser uh, style points. So that's the that's the only real reason to do Apollo style in this mission, at least for the Mun. Obviously, things like uh, Eve and Tylo, other more massive bodies like Moho, especially, makes a lot more sense to do Apollo style. But getting a bit sidetracked here, not much to uh, getting to the Mun really. Just create a maneuver node, just drag it out to the apoapsis is at Mun altitude, and just spin it around. <laughs> as in, move the maneuver node around your orbit until you're getting to a point where you're getting a Mun encounter. You want to be aiming, ideally, for an equatorial MUN orbit. It's not essential by any means. For example, all of my Blunderbuzz missions pretty much are non-equatorial orbits and I have to do rendezvous into orbit again. But I think for the purposes of practicing and getting better at the game, you should be aiming for equatorial at first, just so you can follow the 90 degree vector on the nav ball without having to worry too much about the, the map screen or indeed, you know, following more. Uh, weirder <laughs> navbore trajectories. So you can see I put myself on a collision course with the man just when we ditch that lower stage. It will crash harmlessly into the surface and not leave any debris uh, in space. And then we can do a quick reconfiguration. If you really want to, uh, if you find your lander actually goes out of alignment with your command pod accidentally, you could always be careful and just put a Kerbal inside the lander ahead of time just so you can change its orientation 
in case that happens to you. But I'm not going to do as any, like, what I normally do. I, it, te- it seems to have been coined the Matt Lau method now on the Kerbal Space Rome subreddit, even though I, it's, I, it's definitely not an original idea. But what I normally do is could have both vessels be controllable, either it, through it being, like, having a Kerbal on board or having a probe core on board, and set both of them to target each other so that they'll automatically stay aligned. I'm not going to do any of that trick, just in case any of you are playing on career mode or don't have leveled up Kerbals or just... I don't know, forgot to put a probe core or, you know, means of recharging electricity on the ship you're docking to. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's uh, that's, that's why I'm not doing that. So here we are approaching the MUN. And I'm just going to lower the periapsis just to a more reasonable height. So I, may, I aim for about 50 kilometers just because that seemed like a nice round number. You want to be at least above 10 kilometers on the MUN just so you're definitely, definitely clear of all the terrain features. I usually, when I'm playing, aim for sort of between... 10 and 50 kilometers but you know mileage in my videos varies depending on how lazy I happened to be at the time of recording so uh, again not much more not much to this at this point most of this video's focus is going to be on the latter part where we're actually getting from the surface back up to the command pod in orbit but there we are all uh, ready to embark upon the MUN surface here in low MUN orbit so the first thing we're going to do is transfer two of our Kerbals into the lander itself. One of them is going to be a pilot and the other is going to be an engineer. I don't know. I can't remember what profession they were because we don't actually have Jeb, Bill and Bob and Val, who obviously I, I know who what they all do. I have not got, I've just got generic randomly generated Kerbals because Jebediah, Bill, Bob and Val are all on Lathe in my Life on Lathe series, um, which, you know, was saved. Uh, for those that follow my Instagram and Twitter may be aware, and I guess I think I posted it on Discord as well, may be aware that my SSD sadly passed away after many hours of intense surgery couldn't be saved. But uh, luckily, I didn't realise at the time that KSP actually uses Cloud Steam Cloud Save. I assumed it was one of those games that doesn't use it. Uh, I don't know why, because it does, and a lot of the replies said it uses the Steam Cloud. So I'm like, oh great. So I managed to get my saves back, not to full capacity. There are like a few ships missing, like I haven't got any of the Minmus Base Hotel and Casino craft in this file, but I guess that's the beauty of me putting craft files in the video descriptions is that I can actually recover them myself from the resources I gave to you guys, so it all comes full circle. And here we are, landing, again I didn't really talk that much about the landing, but I did say at the beginning, or at least in the beginning-ish, I mentioned that you should probably be able to at least land on the MUN and return from the MUN before you embark on something more ambitious like an Apollo-style rendezvous. Before we get into the whole rendezvous, getting into orbit, and obviously the meat and potatoes, peas and carrots of this, of this video, we should do a few uh, EVA activities. I forgot to do any science because I put the science inside the little um, doors on that Mark II lander cam that they recently added. I thought it'd be nice to tuck them all away, but by doing that I forgot that they existed when I actually did the mission. So we don't actually do any science aside from doing an EVA report, crew report, and getting a service sample. But the main thing is, you know, planting the flag, and we did that well. Here's our Kerbals getting ready for their Instagram opportunity. There they are, magnificent. And, uh, yeah, with that, we can... Look at that. Isn't that just the most wonderful thing you've ever seen? It's two kinds of... Two kinds of attitudes in this world, isn't it? Anyway, let's get it back onto the lander. So, I put the ladder here. Not actually needed, because Mun's gravity is low enough that jetpacks work. Or, you know, the EVA pack works. It's not really a jetpack, is it? Uh, but, you know, it looks a little bit more, I don't know, realistic, impressive, science fiction-y, if there actually is a ladder that they can climb up, and then we can get ready to uh, create the quick save after I, um, th at this point, because obviously I recorded this yesterday, I'm now recording today, so I'm trying to record exactly when I did things, oh, doing a little bit of science, and we're just panning the camera around, I guess, to show things off, and here we are, creating the save, so here is a quick save here, ready to leave Mun, I've saved it, and that will be part of the file in the description, so I'm actually going to now just quickly load that quick save, just so this is what it will look like, for you guys when you load it anytime now there we are so here we are on the steps of the man this is what it should look like for you guys so our lander is here there's our fuel levels and where's the uh ship there it is the old jewel 5 there a very subtle uh parody of saturn 5 i guess because jewel 5 is an analog of Sat saturn in this game anyway i'm waiting for it to be a little bit ahead of ourselves uh before we launch just because we're going to be taking a very flat approach because obviously man has no atmosphere so it has no atmospheric drag so we can start flying flat very, very soon, and obviously it having very low surface gravity, 
it doesn't take much thrust to weight ratio to get off so we again we can start flying flat quite quickly because we're flying flat like this and because our uh, command pod's altitude is relatively high up we're actually going to be effectively undertaking it so we want to be launching a little bit ahead um, whereas in we should be letting it pass over us before ascending just so that when we actually get our you know encounter note they'll be fairly close they won't be perfect but because you can see there they're pretty close in fact the target's going to be a little bit behind us um when we get to that point so when you want to when when it comes to rendezvousing with a target that's behind you you effectively want to slow down and to have a slower orbit you need to be orbiting slightly higher so by raising our apoapsis slightly higher than the apoapsis of our command pod you can see our uh, separation comes way way down so we can just play around with retrograde and prograde to get that as close as possible you may also be able to tell at this point that that dotted line doesn't quite align with our target line which means our tilt is slightly off so once we've got as close as we can with retrograde and prograde we're going to use a uh, normal and anti-normal you can use radial in and radial out as well if you're still not getting quite close enough but usually you can do it with prograde retrograde and normal and anti-normal and as you can see just watching our separation very carefully there it's creeping ping down and there we have it zero kilometer separation so i'm going to create another quick save here that you could i'm going to add that to the pack as well so just in case you were struggling to get as far as i just did you could always reload this one just to have a go it's actually getting a little bit close to the target ship so this is i've just loaded it in case you couldn't tell so this is what it'd be like when you load up this quick save if you choose to do so so we're going to just time warp our way up to our maneuver node which is a very, very short burn, only going to be a two-second burn. You probably won't be, don't want it to be a two-second burn, though. You want to do it at a slightly, you know, less than full throttle, just so you have a little bit more control. I tend to find if you just do full throttle with maneuver nodes, uh, you tend to either just undershoot or overshoot, so be careful. <laughs> so there we are. So just before we actually finish doing that maneuver node, what I then do is close the maneuver node maker and then just eyeball it myself, because... Maneuver nodes are only so accurate, really. You want to just do the last bit using eyeballing. So as you can see, we couldn't actually get the zero kilometer separation that we got, but 0.1 kilometers, that'd be pretty good, you know. Um, Kerbal, uh, the Kerbal map screen isn't that accurate when it comes to uh, separation of ships, so 0.1 kilometers is perfectly fine. As is almost like at one kilometer, you can just eyeball it once you get that close. Oh, sorry if I sound a little bit nasal, by the way. I've, I've got seasonal allergies. Uh, pretty badly and <laughs> I don't think my medication has quite fixed the problem just yet so once you get close to your target you want to make sure that your nav ball's uh, relative velocity is set to target so you see on my nav ball where it says target if yours doesn't say that if it says orbit or surface just click it and it will like click the word and it will just cycle through so once you got close to the target you want to burn retrograde because that'll be retrograde relative to the target once you've killed off all your velocity or got it close enough to zero point towards the target then again the close once you get closed again burn off all your speed and get closer and closer that way so at this point i'm just going to be eyeballing it i'm not going to use any monopellant to do the docking just to kind of really show you how to dock with monopellant in case things go quite bad and you run out but it would, it would be easier using monopellant for you guys but i'm just showing you how to do it without so i'm basically just seeing if i can get myself nice and lined up by spinning the ship round getting it on the right course very very slow moves and then killing off my speed using retrograde and then gradually coasting into a good position and then once you know i'm at a happy out of a good place i'll then point the ships together double clicking that docking port so it's set as our target and letting myself drift towards it keep your speed low sometimes you may need to just point towards the target again on the nav ball but it's pretty simple but there we are all rendezvous hopefully you made it too um now that we're here we can do a little bit of science actually and then think about getting our couples back on board to go home or and if, like me, your Kerbal Space Program crashes, uh, don't know why that happened, I had to quickly reload the game. Luckily, I did a quick save at that point, so I was able to get back to where I was. So, don't know exactly what I did to antagonize the game like that, but there we go. Here we are, back in low Mern orbit after that brief intermission. Luckily, our Kerbals were all still alive and didn't spontaneously combust, because that happens when the game breaks, apparently. So... Like I say, we can get our Kerbals back on board. So I actually took the data from that pod, just in case you want to get some science from this mission. I personally don't need to, because I've got the whole tech tree unlocked. But if you're doing this for science, then by all means, take the science from the pod. Look at that lovely little shot of the 
craft. This is actually a stock craft. I know the fuel tank of the command pod looks a bit weird. It's actually just a big service bay that's meant to, you know, look like the Apollo service bay. I've got the fuel tanks clipped into that. I mean, I guess you would have seen that in the time lapse of the beginning, but it is a stock part. It comes with the Making History expansion pack. Anyway, I'm burning retrograde here just to lower our periapsis to be kind of put ourselves on a collision course just so we can detach the lander and leave it so it doesn't, you know, get stuck in space. It will crash harmlessly into the moon surface. And now that we've done that, we can think about returning home. So I'm not going to aim for like a particularly realistic Apollo landing, so we're landing in the ocean, that sort of thing. Although I think I actually did land in the ocean. So let's go with actually I did aim to land in the ocean. We're going to just created escape node essentially so our escape kind of path goes backwards along the mun's orbit so that we're actually going to be entering Kerbin's atmosphere directly from the mun burn not to do another burn on the way back and yeah I added way too much fuel to this vessel because I forgot that the actual Apollo uh, the bit that goes from Kerbin to the mun is done with a lower stage not using the command pod stage and then by that point I couldn't be bothered to remove fuel tanks from this bit so it's another Matt Lounge special where we put way too much fuel into the um command pod stage but there we are uh, i didn't actually use all the ablator because ablator in this game is very very powerful so it's i've rarely i don't think i've ever really had any circumstances where i've needed all the ablator in the heat shield so i usually shave off a lot of it just because it makes the shield lighter and therefore you have more delta v i say that after i just told you that i had way too much delta v in this craft anyway i hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful for you i know i've done a docking tutorial similar to this where i used minmus as the example because minmus is a lot easier but that was kind of leaving you more to your own devices whereas this is more like a walkthrough like you can use the saves follow along so you can see exactly because i think it's difficult if your landing isn't exactly like the one in the video it can be hard maybe to mirror it so i thought maybe it's a cool and me a good idea to create something that people you know can mirror so i hope it was helpful i could do more videos like this where i share the quick saves but you know feedback appreciated in the comments uh next week i don't know what's happening i'm very busy hopefully i'll have time to make a ksp video i will definitely have time to make a planet coast video because they take a lot less time to make but hopefully ksp will come back next week as well goodbye